All right, so uh, welcome back to my channel again. This is another update on this 1964 Dodge Custom 80. Today it's going to be uh, uh, the transmission re removal series, and hopefully everything will go off without a hitch. All right, so the first thing is we need to jack up the car roughly uh, 20, 21, uh, actually 22, 24 inches. I uh, added uh, rubber wheel chocks to the back of the car in case if the car wanted to roll backwards on the smooth uh, concrete surface. Chalked back over there and there's another chalk back there. The, hopefully this will be good for information. I don't know if it's this transmission also. Uh, it applies to this transmission also, but the transmission bell housing height from the pan to the top of the top of the bell housing is 16 uh, and a half inches, 16 and one and a half inches. So, you know, just kind of uh, do some addition there and see if your transmission jack might or may not fit. The uh, center frame piece that I was talking about where I'm going to be jacking up is where the lights light is positioned as the center piece uh, subframe right here. Uh, and yeah, let's get to that. And I believe I can jack up the rear by doing something similar, but I'm not, I don't really want to do it too much is you can jack up on the differential on the back and that'll raise the rear center equally also. It doesn't go, it doesn't hurt to go a little bit higher than normal, but the only thing that's a problem is if your car goes too Actually, actually, I'm ta I'm contradicting myself. If you go, if you do go too high on the jack stands where the car's sitting, your transmission jack will not be able to reach the transmission and let it settle, and then you can't really bring the uh, transmission down. Set your parking brake if it's working, and uh, chalk off your wheels and then put your car's transmission in park. And be sure that your parking ball is not jammed up against a parking ball because it makes a pretty horrible feeling and noise when you unlatch it later, when you're gonna drive out of here. It's gonna go cling. It's just, it's just a little pet peeve of mine. I just don't like stressing the parking ball when it's not meant to be, uh, you know, putting all that weight into the parking ball. It's the parking, uh, parking brake's job to uh, technically do that. Uh, so the car has been lifted substantially, as you can see. Behold, flying car. Uh, so I believe I still need to go farther up a little bit. Uh, it's currently at 23 inches or so. Uh, I think I need to go maybe 28, maybe 26, just to ensure that that transmission jack can fit under there. And trust me, there's a lot of space down there, but probably not enough for the transmission jack to uh, go into there and carry the transmission and out. If that's the case, it's the transmission probably needs to get slid all the way back past the differential and right out the back of the car. Because otherwise you're contending with the, uh, the frame rails and that's gonna be in the way if you wanna bring it side, uh, side out, left and right. My dad here was able to help me out. Uh, he got, uh, he uh, stacked, uh, I think it's a f uh, four by six, four by six and stacked it on top of a, uh, a plywood and secured it down, uh, five bolt pattern and had a piece of rubber, jack stand, or a uh, jack uh, platform, put the rubber piece on there so it gets more traction. Get a, I think that's like a, maybe half an inch worth of cast iron plate. And then that wooden piece just goes on. And bit by bit, this was enough to get the car into the air. I believe I still need more. I believe, yeah, I still I still need more, but uh, I'll have to do some more measuring before I do ensure that the transmission is able to come out. If the transmission is completely uh, completely separated 
the engine has no support at all and then the trend the engine will bow backwards and drop to the floor because uh, the engine has two mounts left and right and then the transmission mount to the center here they all you know work together to uh, you know keep in suspension in the frame if this transmission mount or the transmission just comes out with leaving the engine in place the engine will go backwards as I say and drop to the floor and break the uh, uh, break the motor mounts and well break the engine so to combat that I think so that the uh, engine is gonna be uh, safe safe as houses I guess you can get a ratchet strap and strap down the engine oil pan or near the sunken in section of the oil pan and then ratchet it and secure it via the frames or the other Part, yeah, other parts of the frame. That, or you can have a redundancy uh, in place with the jack uh, jacked up against the frame, I mean the uh, oil pan, with a block of wood so it doesn't puncture or hurt the oil pan. Yeah, once that's in place, I think the uh, engine can be in place, but once that's there, you cannot remove that jack once the transmission's out. Now, as you can see, it's, um, yeah, it's kind of filthy. Here's the oil pan soaking wet. It's very shiny, as you can see with the light. And, uh, I think, uh, my, I think my transmission mount is not working because, uh, watch this. Now, I think you're able to see that movement, but the entire transmission and engine is moving as I'm lifting up on the uh, drive line here. I'm going to try to set you guys down so that you can see this movement, which is not much. And you can see the transmission moving in unison as I'm lifting up on this also. And it's making a clicking noise, if you can hear that. Yeah, I think you can hear that. Oh, hell no! Yeah, the amount is bad. <laughs> Not surprising, but I just replaced that, like, I don't know, maybe a couple years ago. Three years ago, I think. Seven years ago, maybe. Uh, and yeah, the mount is gone again, so I already bought a transmission mount just ahead of time because I knew it was probably going to be bad. Torsion bars, they're fine, but they're soaked in, I think that's transmission fluid. Yeah, that's trans, uh, transmission fluid. This side also is a little bit better, but more dry. Well, it's pretty filthy, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna try my best to dig, get through this mess, <laughs> literally. So you have the linkage side of here, and you have the speedometer cable right up there. There you go, you have the speedometer cable up there, which I did remove and remove the uh, gear because I kind of uh, want to keep that for later. So the gear is not in place as of now. I'm probably going to put a plug up there to stop all that leaking and because the speedometer does not work and it's frozen up. Um, here's the cooler lines coming down. Uh, this one's absolutely mangled so it's, the closer it gets to the engine it's bent in all sorts of shapes. So uh, before I start uh, removing pretty much the transmission. I'm going to drain it just a little bit and put the pan back on. Uh, that'll make it a little bit lighter weight to remove. Uh, well, I loosened up all the uh, the bolts all around the circumference of the pan and then I just left one bolt so I'm kind of letting it funnel to one side instead of the uh, 
you know, this other side where I'm going to be potentially be showered upon if I take this last bolt out. So you see that the uh, you see that the dripping has slowed down. I can loosen the bolt just a little bit, and it'll come pouring down. This way I can control how much fluid is going to come out. Now you can uh, go to Walmart or some grocery store and they'll probably have some turkey baster trays or something like that. They're, that's more than enough to catch all the fluid under this uh, oil uh, transmission pan because the turkey baster trans are, I mean turkey baster pans or turkey pans are pretty big. Uh, even more substantial than this uh, abysmal catch can. And more fluid comes out. And, yeah. The fluid color has changed the last time I drained it, which was, I think, I think a year ago, maybe two years ago. It's definitely a little bit darker. Yep, probably went through a couple clutches. Not surprising. So I'm going to let it drain like this, and then once I take the pan off, well, we'll see uh, what has changed since the, the, within those two years. Will we see chunks? Will we see metal sparkly bits in the pan, in the filter? Hopefully not, but I mean, there's definitely gonna be some sparkly bits that are gonna be in there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, We'll just wait until this kind of uh, finished drain, or majority of it drains out, and then I'll catch you back uh, in a later minute. Alright, so the drain has pretty much slowed down to a slow trickle. Uh, it was kind of leaking from the center area. I thought there was a crack, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, but I am going to be replacing this pan with a different one, probably a B&M transmission pan where it has a a uh, little um, drain plug. Just gonna take that up and remove this bolt completely, and hopefully uh, set down the pan easy or easily. Unlike last time, I think you guys remember the last time I tried to set this down and then splash all over the place. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't I don't do it again. Easy, steady, steady as she goes. And nailed it. Uh, wow, yeah, that the, um, you remember, you guys, uh, you remember the magnet that I put in? Yeah, it's kind of looking fuzzy. So yeah, there's some metal chunks in there, it looks like, or metal shavings. I shouldn't say chunks. Chunks in bit, uh, chunks and shavings are a little bit different. Shavings, less critical. Bits, more critical. See that? The magnet definitely looks a little bit fuzzy. I don't want to get the camera too close or else the autofocus will just not work at all. The fluid looks a little bit mm, darkish reddish pink, kind of like this on my skin. Yeah. It's a good color, uh, that, that kind of fluid on my skin. But I suspect we have some other issues. Okay, so let's point the light upwards. That'll help a lot. And but uh, first sight, not uh, not promising. You see, you see that thing dangling there. That's a bug. Uh, I don't know how that bug got there, but I hope it didn't mess up anything inside the transmission or if there's some kind of cluster of bugs that made it inside and then passed the filter and probably screwed things up in the uh, clutches. But I don't, I don't see anything catastrophic like a cracked um, valve body that these early push button a727s are known to uh, do. This one looks all right. Look, doesn't look cracked from the last time I saw it. And the 
Well, buddy, looks pretty pristine. There's little bits of shavings, if you can see that, the little glitter. Like, if you see the little white bits in there, that's, uh, that's metal shavings. Um, not great. Not great at all. But, uh, yeah, let's take off the filter next and, uh, see what's behind door number two. Now that I kind of left the uh, residual fluid to just kind of fall out of place, I'm just kind of, uh, looking to see if I can loosen that cooler line that's up there that's, I believe that's uh, outbound toward the radiator. Uh, the other one should be inbound, if not, uh, forgive me. Um, that might be incorrect. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I need to loosen this cable right here also. This is the parking lot cable where, you know, if you're moving that parking tall left and right, this is what jams the uh, little key or the, the parking sprag in place and then that uh, keeps your car from moving. So pretty much we're going to be loosening the parking lock uh, sprag right there and the transmission uh, cooler line uh, fittings that's right up there and be sure to have a a flare nut wrench set because you do not want to uh, round those uh, nuts off. But then again, uh, my cooler line, uh, my transmission cooler lines that's going to the radiator is pretty mangled. Whoever uh, messed with these lines in the past just mangled them pretty good. So if we look at the uh, lines all the way up in the front, they're like twisted and contorted in all sorts of all sorts of shapes is just asking to be replaced. So I'm probably, I might just do that instead. Uh, I might just, I may just do that, but it may, it may be uh, in your best interest to get some uh, wire snips or something and sever the cooler lines somewhere along here where it's accessible. Because if you damage the threads on the transmission case, well, you're going to have to get a Healy coil and, you know, that's just another headache that you have to deal with. But if we're going to be cutting the lines, well, you know, it's maybe $50 or so for a new uh, line set or transmission cooler line set that you can get. So, yeah, just kind of weigh your options there. You risk damaging the case by removing the crusty threads or give up $50 for a new uh, line set that you intend to put in. Uh, so update, the transmission cooler lines are, uh, the little nuts, they're not coming off. Uh, they'll move, but then they'll twist the uh, line with it. So I'm guessing it's gonna break the line either way. So might as well just uh, snip the line uh, as close to the transmission as possible and sacrifice the uh, uh, the transmission line and buy another one uh, later on. I don't really want to do this, but it's probably going to become uh, inevitable. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can undo the uh, filter. And uh, you may want to consider uh getting a new pretty much uh what is it the transmission uh filter bolts also because these are kind of uh pretty messed up i mean even before the time i changed the uh, filter the first time i uh, guess this is what i was waiting for being showered with transmission fluid while in the winter And we can uh, take the f look at the filter and see what it has filtered out, and that will kind of give us a story of what's going on inside the transmission. I mean, it's all glittery from looking at it from here, so I'm guessing that there's going to be quite a bit of metal shavings in there. Let's keep that there. Let that drain even more. Alright, so with the filter out of the way, I can really see the condition of the valve body. I don't know what I'm seeing there is a crack or not. Or that's just a 
uh, casting flash. Yeah, that looks like casting flash. Yeah, because if the battle body's cracked, well, that poses a risk where this battle body, well, can't be used. It's junk. I have to source another one. And there's not many valve bodies uh, that you can kind of source in in this today's age. <laughs>